Welcome to our lesson preview for today. This is lesson number nine, the rhythms of rest. So uh, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, history, especially in the beginning of uh, the world and also history uh, after the Israelites came out of Egypt. So bear with us and it's going to be fun. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful time that we're going to spend reviewing some uh, principles and some basic uh, things that we need to know in order for us to have a better rest, in order for us to appreciate more what you have given us uh, in the Sabbath, this great gift. Sometimes we take it for granted and we just don't uh, take advantage of it in the way you um, said it since the beginning. So give us wisdom as we go through it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, so the rhythms of rest. So we are going to see how the rest has gone through difficult or to different um, eras in time. And we are going to uh, draw the lessons that we are supposed to draw for ourselves. So the first is uh, before the command. Let's remember that there was a command to rest and, and that was at the beginning. So before the command, the prelude to rest. We know what happened. We're not going to read uh, Genesis 1, um, the first verse all the way to 31st. We are going to just recap what happened. So the Lord created. In the first day, we know that uh, he created light because there was all, everything was in darkness. So he put a little bit of light to the uh, planet Earth and he created that. So in order for, for him to continue the, the work of creation. So the second day, he separated the, the, the sea and created the oceans and, and dry land and that kind of stuff. The third day, we know that he created the plants and trees and, 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 and all the vegetation and that that exists since the day of uh, the third day of creation. And the fourth day, if we remember or if you remember, he created the sun and the moon. And he said that he will set these uh, lights to help people for this uh, seasons and in, 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 in the, in the days. In, in, in times, so he created light. But starting from fifth in, in sixth day and in, in, in seventh day, things changed a little bit because on the fifth day, he created um, the animals on the, on the oceans and, and, and the rivers and the fishes and that kind of stuff. And he created also the birds. But in the sixth day, he created the beasts in, in, in land animals. Along with them, he created man. Just think a little bit about it. He created man in a different way because all the rest of the creation, he called it into existence and they just existed. Okay? They were created because of the word of his mouth, because of the authority of his word. But when he came to the man, just you... I guess you remember, I bet that, that he shaped the, the, the man out of the dust of the ground. And then, according to the story, he breathed life into his nostrils. But in order for him to, to breathe life into his nostrils, the Lord had to bend down on his knees because the... the, the, the the man, the, the, the body was on the ground after he shaped it and he blew his, his, his uh, breath into his nostrils and he became a living creature. All right, up to that point, everything is simple. Then, after a while, uh, Adam was uh, naming all the animals that we know until this day in, in and, and, and he found that there was no companion for him. All the other animals had a male and female companion, male and female, male and female, but nothing for himself. So, so he found out that there was something kind of a missing. And then the Lord made him go to sleep and, and open his eye and grab that rib from himself. And then he created 
Eve out of the reed. And then he introduced her to him. We know the story. So that happened in six days. Everything in six days. So that's the prelude to rest. That happened all uh, the first six days. So in every single day, God, every single day, God created and evaluated every single day of the week. And according to the story, from the first to the fifth day, he saw and it was good. But when he came to the sixth day, he saw and it was very good. So it's better or it was better when he created man and woman. So then the Sabbath. So when it comes to the Sabbath, he didn't call it to existence. He purposely let one more day to happen and he called it and he said this is going to be a day of rest. It's going to be the Sabbath. The word Sabbath um, in Hebrew it means rest. And for the Hebrew people, the Sabbath day became a day of rest and a day of prayer, a day of worship. So that's what uh, makes the Sabbath different. Because the, re the, the rest of the days happened while the Lord was creating. But the Sabbath had a special meaning because the Lord rested. So now let's talk about the rest. Because with the command comes the rest. Let's uh, read, for example, Genesis chapter 2 and verses 1 to 3. And it says that those the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. So let's uh, go back a little bit. The other six days he was creating. He was active at work. The seventh day he did nothing but rest. And he blessed it. He blessed the day. And he sanctified the day. And, 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 and he commanded us to rest on that day. So was he tired? No, he wasn't. But he foresaw the need of one day out of seven for us to rest. So the command came when the Lord created um, the, the, the man into his image and he knew that they will need to rest, no as a need, because remember, um, as they were created um, perfect, they, they did not tire at all. Adam wasn't tired. The first Sabbath, actually, Adam didn't work uh, uh, much. They, they started the week by resting. They started the week uh, of their lives by resting the, the sixth day, because remember that the first part of the day was the, the evening, and then the second part of the day was the, the, the lighter part, the, the, the day. And, and, and then the Sabbath came. And he rested in companion and fellowship uh, with his creator. That's what happened in the first Sabbath. So Adam wasn't tired because being perfect, he did not get tired. But the Lord knew that he would need a day of rest, not because of tiredness. Tiredness is included, but that wasn't the initial intention. The initial intention was to spend some time with his creator in, in companion with him, in worship with him, and in a close relationship with the Lord. It is interesting that the Lord sanctified the day. The sanctification of something, according to the Bible, is setting something apart for a special and a holy purpose.
So in other words, what the Lord did with the Sabbath is to separate these 24 hours for a special uh, holy activity. So when Adam and Eve were called to rest on the Sabbath, what the Lord was saying to them is, I, I separated these 24 hours so we can have a, a close relationship. We can be in companion, but it has to be not a, a, a any companion or any relationship. It's going to be something that is going to make us holy, that is going to be sanctified, that is going to get us closer one to each other. So the Sabbath then became a reminder of the Lord as the creator, the Lord as the creator of all things. Then the second rhythm was in uh, Mount Sinai. So before the Sinai, there's something interesting that I need to mention here. I don't have it in my, in my outline, but Remember that when the Israelites were in, in slavery in Egypt, in one of the conversations that uh, Moses and Aaron had with Pharaoh, Pharaoh complained because they, they, they were requesting Pharaoh to let the people go to the desert and worship the Lord in the desert at the other side of the Red Sea. And Pharaoh said, well, you guys can worship here. No, 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 no. We have to go because our God commanded us to go to the desert and worship him there. And Pharaoh complained and he said, you guys are turning things upside down. You guys are changing the stuff because you are making them to rest one day at a week. So in other words, what Moses and Adar and Aaron started was kind of a reform of the Sabbath day because they they stopped resting on the Sabbath day being in slavery having more than 200 living in, in in into the Egyptian country they were not keeping the Sabbath in in in, in, in being slaves they, they had no control of their time and no authority on them or for themselves to say, well, I'm going to stay home and I'm going to rest and I'm going to worship in, in, in these days. No, probably they knew about it, probably. But Moses and Aaron started a reform and, and, and the reform consisted in keeping the Sabbath day and remembering the Lord as the creator. So the complaint of Pharaoh was that they were resting one day out of a week and that was the Sabbath. So then Mount Sinai. But before Mount Sinai, this is very interesting because if you read um, Exodus chapter 19, you're going to have a better picture of what happened in Exodus 20. Because in Exodus 19 is the prelude of the Ten Commandments. And what happened in the prelude? What, there were storms, there were thunders, and, and, and there were lightnings. The Lord was trying to attract the attention of the people to what was going to be proclaimed. Okay, so the Lord did something great in order for the people to move their eyes to where, what they were doing, to what was going to happen in Mount Sinai, in the proclamation of the law. That was the prelude. Then the command came. So remember, we know that. Proclamation of the Ten Commandments, the First Commandment, the Second Commandment, then the Fourth Commandment comes and it says, remember. I guess we all are going to agree that we only remember something that has been said before or something that happened before. So for those who think that the Sabbath was introduced for the, for the Jewish people or for the Israelites or God established the Sabbath for the Israelites, the fourth commandment speaks loud against that belief because we can only remember something that has been said or happened before. So when Moses or when the Lord says through Moses in the Ten Commandments, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, it means that the Sabbath was even older than the Israelite nation. The Israelite nation 
came to, to uh, be formed uh, after the Sabbath. So then we are going to read Exodus 20. And we're going to read the fourth commandment. And we are going to see how the commandment is linked to the creation. Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So we're not going to remember the Sabbath day just, oh yeah, there's a Sabbath. No, no, no. We have to keep it holy. And the way to keep it holy is this. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. So it's not ours. That time, the holy time, the, the Sabbath is not ours. It's the Lord's time. So that's why we have to keep it holy. It's the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do not do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the reason to remember and keep it holy is because the Lord rested in that day because he made everything else the prior six days and then he rested so the the, the fourth commandment makes a link to the creation time so in other words every time that we keep the sabbath holy we are commemorating the creation time and we are remembering not only that we have to keep it holy but that the lord is the creator. Someone said once that if uh, people wouldn't stop, stop keeping the Sabbath, there will be no atheist people in this world. Because at the moment they, the people stopped keeping the Sabbath, they forgot about the Creator. That's why the Lord introduces the fourth commandment not as a, as a negative, uh, in, a, in a negative way as he did with the other commands. But he, he said, remember. Because the other commandments, you, 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 you read and say, you shall not do, you shall not. But the fourth commandment, it says, remember. In Hebrew, it sounds like this, lotik, something like that, which means never do this, never do that. But in the, in the case of the Sabbath, it says, remember, remember. All right. So now we already said that there is a link between the commandment and the creation time. So before the promised land, this is another rhythm, okay? 40 years after the commandment was given, there was a test. So the Lord decided to do a test uh, for the people of Israel. And he decided to test them and see if they were being faithful, if they were being loyal. So that happens. Let me see. Yes. That happened four years after the, the um, Exodus. Okay, so what happens is that um, the Lord wanted to test the people. And he said, I'm going to see if they keep my laws, if they keep my commandments, if they keep my statutes. And this is the test what he did. They were complaining because they, they didn't have the, the food. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to give you some food. And, and, and the manna rained from heaven. We know the story. And, and uh, they, they called it manna because manna means, what is this? Or what is it? Because they couldn't recognize it. It was like a wafer, according to, to the story in, in the Bible. It's like a wafer with uh, some kind of honey. And... and 
the, the instructions from Moses was, you guys collect the amount that you guys want. And, and according to the story, some collected a little bit, other more, they, according to how much they wanted to eat. It was enough for everyone. And, and, and Moses said, you have to collect the, the manna every single day. If you collect a double portion for the following day, it will spoil. But on the sixth day, you have to do something different because everything happened the first, uh, first five days. So the sixth day, Moses called again the, congreg uh, the congregation and said, today is the preparation day. Today is the sixth day. And tomorrow is the Sabbath day. So they knew that they had to keep it holy. Okay. So he said, today you have to collect a double portion of the food and keep it for tomorrow. But today, if, if you're going to boil it, boil it today. If you're going to prepare it in a different way, prepare it today. Because tomorrow is the Sabbath and you have to keep it holy. Many people obeyed, got a double portion of the manna, and did what they had to do. And the following day, it was not spoiled like it happened the previous uh, five days or six days. But uh, some of them were stubborn and they said, OK, now I'll come out tomorrow and pick uh, some for, for, for myself. I want to uh, grab a double portion for today because it, it spoils. They didn't want to, so on the Sabbath, some of them came out of their tents trying to find manna on the ground, and they couldn't. So the Lord got mad at the people, and he said, how long are they going to uh, not be obedient to my laws? So remember, the Lord is saying that he is going to test the people in regards his laws, his commandments. And the test was the Sabbath. Because he said, I'm going to send the manna. They're going to collect every single day the portion that they need. And on the Friday, they're going to, or the sixth day, because they, 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 they didn't have a, a name back then. So they're going to grab a double portion and they're going to keep it for the Sabbath because the Sabbath day will be no manna on the ground. And some of them obeyed and some of them didn't. So the test was on the Sabbath because the Lord was guiding them to the promised land. Okay, so then in the promised land, in the brink of the promised land, uh, this uh, miracle happened. There was a triple miracle because on the Friday fell a double portion of manna. That's a, I'm, I'm saying the, 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 the three ways in, in how this uh, miracle happened. The Sabbath, no manna fell and the manna did not spoil like the other days. So he showed them in a triple way that he was very interesting on what was going to be their response to it. So everything to show the importance of the Sabbath. So now in the brick of the Jordan River, after 40 years in the desert, Moses is ready to die. So if you read the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, it's called uh, purposely. Duro, which means a second, and nomos, which means law. So Deuteronomy is a second law. It was like a second writing of the law and also like a second hearing of the law. Because if you read the book of Deuteronomy, you're going to find out that this is like a sermon. I don't know how many hours it lasted because it's very long. We're talking about 33 chapters and then the 34th chapter is the, 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 the uh, account of the Moses' uh, death. But to hear the entire book of Deuteronomy, it took several hours, at least uh, three or four hours. Okay. So Moses gathered the people of Israel and, 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 the, and the leadership was being um, uh, taken by Joshua. 
Moses is giving up because the Lord said that he was going to die. And, 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 and Joshua takes the leadership of the nation of Israel. It was going to be Joshua who is going to lead the people into the promised land. So they were at the at the at the at the side, the east side, I guess, of the of the Jordan River, waiting for the moment to cross the river and take possession of the promised land. And right there at the at the shore of the river or at the river shore, Moses reads the law. And in this case, the the, the fourth commandment changes a little bit. Let me read it for you guys. That's in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verses uh, 12 to 15. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verses um, 12 to 15. And it says, Observe, note uh, how he changes the word remember, and now he uses the word observe. We'll talk about that. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant or your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates, that you may, that your male servant and your female servant any may rest as well as you. And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and in the, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty, mighty hand. And this is the part that we have to pay attention. And by an outstretched arm, therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. So Moses changes a little bit the, the beginning and he uses the word observe, which means pay attention. Have a, you, you have to be careful in how you do things and don't miss it. And then at the end, the last verse, verse 15, Deuteronomy 5, he says, because you were a slave in Egypt and the Lord brought you out of slavery with an outstretched arm and he saved you. And that's the reason you have to keep the Sabbath day holy. So in other words, what Moses is saying, because you are going to enter to the promised land, the land that, is, that flows milk and honey, the, the land that the Lord prepared for you, that is going to give you, because you are a redeemed person, then you have to keep the Sabbath day holy. So now we have a, 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 a different thing. Oh, that, that's it, yeah. Because you are a redeemed person, you have to keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a sign of creation and also a sign of redemption. So do you remember the first, um, the beginning at the, at the creation and then the, at the Sinai? And that's linked to uh, the creation. And then in the brink of the promised land, the Lord tested the people because they were going to enter into the promised land and he was going to be, he was going to meet, or he wanted to make sure that they understood, that they grasped what he wanted about the Sabbath day. All that is in the Old Testament. That's right. So many people might wonder, so what happens in the New Testament? And how am I going to keep the Sabbath day? That's uh, an answer that we cannot uh, just give by ourselves because it has been a, a, a lot of study how to keep the Sabbath day holy. But uh, I want to give you guys some principles that are very uh, important and you guys can keep the Sabbath uh, based on these principles. What did Jesus do on the Sabbath day? That's the first thing. According to the account in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up and he read and we know that he read on Isaiah 61 and at the end of his reading he said this prophecy has been fulfilled in your ears today 
in, in, in Luke records at least another two times when Jesus was on the synagogue, in the synagogue, on the Sabbath day. So at least three times are uh, recorded in the Gospel of Luke. So the first thing, or the first principle here is that the Sabbath day, we are to keep it holy by attending church or being in church. Because today, with this COVID and, and the virus thing, things have changed a lot. And sometimes we have to stay at home. Sometimes we have to uh, gather in a different place, but the church, and sometimes at church, if it's possible and, and it, if it is open. But when I, when I met by church is that we have to worship and, and you guys know that church is not the four walls, but the people. We are the church. So we can gather either through any of the platforms on the internet, or we can gather at home, or we can gather at some place, an open place, or a, a closed doors in, in, in a certain uh, facility. But when, what I'm trying to say is that attending and gathering is very important on the Sabbath day. The second principle here, Jesus stood up, in red. So he was leading as well. He was participating while he was in the synagogue. He was not just sitting down and see what happens and see what these guys that are leading now have for me today. No, he stood up and he participated. And the church has so many ministries and departments where, where there's a lot of help that is needed. And we can support those ministries and those departments with our talents, with our, with our gifts. And the third principle is that we are going to worship the Lord on the Sabbath day. Um, David is, is very uh, clear in this particular principle when, he, uh, when we read the, the, the book of Psalms. He was all the time praising the Lord. Because that was, uh, that was what brought to him the happiness in life. And he said that the Lord was due of this worship. Um, and he was the only one who was worthy to receive the honor and the glory. So that's, those are uh, the principles in how we can worship the Sabbath. But there are a couple more things that I need to mention. Going back to Jesus Christ. Uh, Luke uh, 4 says that he went to the synagogue. But there is a, a, a detail that many times is, uh, people miss in this uh, particular uh, incident. Luke wrote his uh, gospel at least 20 years after. I, I, I want to say 30 or 40, but at least 20 years after the death of Jesus Christ. And, 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 and for Luke... The way he related and the way he said it is very interesting because he said that Jesus went to the synagogue according to his custom, according to what he used to do things. So 20, 30, 40 years after the death of Jesus, for Luke still was the custom to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So we never saw Jesus... Um, Saying, well, now we, we, we don't have to go to, to, we don't have to keep the Sabbath day anymore because I came to, to, uh, to change the law. Or the law is, is, is useful now because I'm going to die on the cross. And from now on, you guys have to do or you guys can do whatever you want. No, he never said you guys can kill now or you guys can, can uh, commit adultery now because uh, my law is going to be. Avoided at the moment I die on the cross. No, he did the opposite. Actually, when when he was in the sermon, uh, preaching the sermon on the mountains, uh, he said, "You guys heard that you should not kill, but whoever gets mad at his brother, he's gonna be accused of murdering." Or you guys heard that you are not supposed to uh, have these uh, lustful thoughts for a woman. Uh, and, and, and commit adultery. But whoever has just the lo lustful thoughts is going to be accused of committing adultery. So Jesus went beyond just the letter of the law and he put it in a spiritual realm. So he never canceled 
the fact that we are supposed to keep the law. He never said, don't keep my commandments anymore because I am going to die. No, for Luke, there was the custom and the commandment of keeping the Sabbath day 20 or 30 years after Jesus' death. So that's in the New Testament. There's many other things that we can say uh, uh, about this, but I'm just going to end with one more uh, passage of Jesus, and that's in Mark chapter 2, and verses 27 and 28. We're going to read it. Mark 2, 28 and 27. And it says like this. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. So what happened? So let me tell you the story. So they were trying to uh, trap Jesus. And there was this man who had a, a, a hand that was uh, crippled, or he was uh, uh, dried. So he healed him, and that was a Sabbath, a Sabbath day. So they started to accuse him of breaking the Sabbath day. So he said, well, what, what do you guys do if a, a little sheep goes into a, or falls into a, a pit? Wouldn't you take it, take it out or would you just leave it die? So a man's life is of more value or is worth it more than an animal. So that's why I have the authority to do what I'm doing. And the Son of Man is still the Lord of the Sabbath. If there was someone who had the authority to talk about the Sabbath and to teach us what to do on the Sabbath day, that was Jesus Christ, because he described himself as the, as the, as the Lord of the Sabbath. So a few uh, details here. For the Jewish people, the law, their laws, not the law of God, their laws, said that if an animal uh, falls into a pit, they have to take it out. Why? Because it was worth some money. So they cannot lose that money. They cannot work on the Sabbath day, but they cannot lose money. Then they have to take it out. But if a man was sick, he couldn't be healed on the Sabbath day unless he was dying. Then they had to do something for him. But this man had his, his hand dried and they said, well, he's not going to die because he has his hand dried. But Jesus said, no, it is good to do good on the Sabbath day. It is proper to do good on the Sabbath day. So he said the, the life of a man, of a person is of a more value, is more, va more valuable than a life of an animal. And I am the Lord of the Sabbath. I know what to do on the Sabbath and what not to do. And it is proper to do good on the Sabbath day. So you guys can say, well, someone can say, well, it is good to do good on any day. It is. Keep on doing it. But the Lord teach or taught about the Sabbath day in, in a special way. So he said that it is good to go to the temple and worship, to go to the church but also to do good. There are some times that we probably won't have the chance to, to, to go to church. But we can help someone who is really in need. So he taught us what to do on the Sabbath day. And that's what I said at, at the beginning. The best example of, of how to keep the Sabbath day is through Jesus Christ. And that's what I gave you some principles of what to do. We have to worship, we have to go to church, and we can participate uh, in, while we're in church. So now Jesus is saying also that it is good to do, it is proper to do good on the Sabbath day. And, and another thing that is uh, said about the Sabbath is that Jesus said, pray that when you are being persecuted, the persecution doesn't fall on a winter time or on the Sabbath day. Why? 
because on the Sabbath day you are supposed to be in a different place. But Jesus said, pray about it. So Jesus highlighted the importance of the Sabbath day. And that's why this lesson is so important because many times we, we take the Sabbath for granted and we do what we think we can do. We do what we want and not necessarily what the Lord does. So Jesus changed things, uh, changed the perspective of things because when he came to this world, the Sabbath was just a, a, a set of rules. And, and making more rules and making more rules in order to, according to them, to keep it holy. But we're not going to make the Sabbath holier, adding more stuff and more, more norms and more laws. The Sabbath is already holy. We're not going to make it holier or less holy. It is already holy because the Lord established that it is holy since the, 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 the week of creation. We are the ones that are going to miss it if we don't keep it holy. We are the ones that are going to miss it and going to miss the blessing of this day if we don't pay attention to the Sabbath day. So that's the lesson for this coming week. And as we close this uh, lesson preview, let's remember that the Sabbath is a sign of creation and also a sign of redemption. And in the same way that Moses and Aaron started a reform, introducing again the Sabbath day uh, for the Israelites while they were in slavery in Egypt, it is proper for us to uh, start our own reform, but it starts at home. It, we're not gonna force people to do what they don't want to do. It starts with us keeping the Sabbath day holy and, and, and worshiping the Lord. And, and just tell others about it. Just tell others about it. And, and, and if we do that, I bet that soon we're going to have more people keeping the Sabbath day holy because they're going to see the way we do it. And then we're going to start the own reform, our own reform before our redemption day is coming. We know that Jesus is coming soon. So there's something that we have to do. In the, in the age of the entering into the promised land, there's a lot that needs to be done. So as you study the lesson for this coming week, remember those principles. Remember that Sabbath is a sign, but it's a sign of love. It's not something that you're going to force. It's you not know, something that you're going to teach without people knowing about the Redeemer. So the law at the Mount Sinai came after the people was redeemed. So you waste your time. You want to teach the, the, the commandment of the Sabbath to someone who doesn't feel like he is created by God or that he is redeemed. So that's why the importance of introducing the Lord and introducing Jesus Christ is even, uh, of, of, uh, is even more important than introducing the Sabbath day for most people. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, thank you for this wonderful lesson. Thank you for the reminder of uh, the Sabbath day. Sometimes we keep on doing our own stuff. Sometimes we uh, try to uh, not to think that it's a holy day and we do what we think we should do. But it is time for us to understand that this is your time, it's not ours. And that we should keep it holy as you established it from the beginning. Uh, as we go through this week and uh, we go through a deep story through our lesson, give us the understanding of the Holy Spirit so we may uh, get the lesson that you are trying to teach us in a personal way. Way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.